Hi, welcome to Jeremy's Tech Channel. And today we're gonna to talk about what makes the GNOME desktop environment so great. What makes the GNOME desktop environment so great? I'm doing a series on four of my favorite desktop environments for Linux. And uh, today we're talking about the GNOME desktop environment. If you are new to Linux, you may already think uh, why does he keep saying GNOME? Is it GNOME? Is it GNOME? Isn't it one of those little things of those gnomes? Linux, the actual operating system that we use is actually GNU Linux, and they actually were playing off of that, and it's GNOME. That's how they do it. That's what it is, so we say GNOME. Just so you know. The things we are looking for today in the GNOME desktop environment is one, how configurable it is. Two, is it something that would work with my hardware? How much resources does it take, for example? Um, and also, how intuitive is it? How, how is the workflow? Does it work for me and how I work? So I'm hoping to answer those questions for you today. Let's check it out. And I figured um, we should go ahead and go through Fedora. This is Fedora 35 with GNOME version 41. I know 42 is coming out really soon, but it didn't come out when I was ready to do this video. So we get GNOME 41 and that's a GNOME. So we're using GNOME with a GNOME. There are some things about the GNOME desktop environment that are outstanding. This is one of the full featured desktop environments. You have got many applications that work with this. Um, it is pretty hefty, if you will. A lot of Linux distributions use GNOME in some shape, form, or fashion in a way that they've tweaked uh, to work for their workflow for how they want their distribution to be managed um, through the desktop environment. So here we are you actually are met with just a blank screen. I already have this pulled up, but when you come in, this is what you are greeted with in Fedora 35. And if you don't know what you're doing, you might start clicking and trying to figure out what's going on, but it is quite intuitive once you get the hang of it. Over here on the top right, you've got your classic sound network battery management, your settings, locking the screens, power on and off, restart that kind of situation. There's your settings. Now, in the middle, you have your time, you've got um, your notifications, you can set up a do not disturb, which is great. This is standard fare here. Then you have this activities button, which pulls you up into another menu with workspaces here which is great. And then your actual application choices here, your show applications menu, and then you've still got your desktop and a search bar on top. Now, one of the things I do love about this is, is its workflow is a little different than other desktop environments. For instance, normally you would have some sort of start menu here or some sort of menu um, availability through a click and they have it through this activities bar, which gives you a multitude of things that you can choose to do. Or if you press the super key, which is the Windows key on my laptop, I get the same menu. So a one button push to that place there. You've got your basics here, you've got your Firefox, you've got your applications, and you'll notice this calendar is made by the GNOME desktop environment. Obviously, this is their file manager. This is the GNOME files. It used to be Nautilus, and they like to keep the manila folder look here. Um, I think in GNOME 42, they actually changed that to a blue color. This is exactly what you'd expect. You can add other locations here. Great. Now, I do like being able to use the super key to pull through here. But my point in showing some of this is there's a lot of extra applications to make this full feature that the GNOME team has for you. Boxes is one of those applications. This is for virtual machines. You just go up to the top left over here, click the plus. 
you can do downloads for these or you can find an ISO that you have and rock and roll. But this is one of their applications and that's great. They also have um, some other applications that you can use as well. So they have their screenshot tool if you need a screenshot tool. And let's take a screenshot. There it is. I can save it or whatever. I can take a screenshot of the screen, the window, or selection that I choose. Now something else to note is you have this search menu and so I'm going to search for Libre Office here. So I search for Libre and here are some of the Libre Office pieces here, the writer, the calc, the impress. But you also see that this clock pulled up in the search function, uh, the time from Libreville Gibbon. And you have software that's pulled off that also has those names as well from the software manager that they have here, which is super great. But I can click on LibreOffice Writer. Here it is. This is great. I do want to show you that the windows over here, you don't have your typical up and down arrow to maximize, minimize, or manipulate the window. And you know, they use a uh, more of a gesture style situation here. So I just grab the bar, pull it up to the top, and then it will make it full screen. It will also, if I drag it all the way over to the left, we'll divide it up. Not necessarily full tiling window manager situation, but completely usable. And that is cool. Let me use that button again. I'm starting to really like that button. You know, you've got your terminal. Here it is. Pull up top. And you're seeing 1.4, almost 1.5 gigabytes being used. This is a full featured desktop environment. So this is pretty much expected. If you've got over four gigs of RAM, and a pretty modern CPU, this is going to be a non-issue for you. Here's their system manager right here, the one that they've written. And let me do this, boop, which is great. This is actually, now that I've pulled that up, it's showing 1.9 gigabytes of memory being used. CPUs are uh, definitely not idling. I am liking being able to maximize and bring the window back to a decent maneuverable state by just dragging up to the top. I do like that. I really do like this side of this. It's pretty cool. So let's take a look at workspaces here. I'm gonna open up Firefox and there it is. And so now I'm going to go back to this menu and I wanna move it to this workspace so you can see I have some choices here of workspaces so I'm going to put it on this workspace here or on this workspace here and there we are and if I want to go between the workspaces that's easy and what you do is if you're in this view or the other view you hit the super key which for me is the windows key Paging up and down gives me those choices to go between workspaces, which is great. So I've got that one here. I've got this over here. And let's say I want to keep my calendar up over here. And so now I can do it. And when I added something to that workspace, so I have a window on each workspace, it adds another workspace for a clean workspace automatically. So first workspace, second workspace third workspace. And now if I just hit the Windows key, now I can see those workspaces right up here. Very intuitive, very cool. Things are working in a different way, but in an intuitive way, which is great. Um, the other piece to the puzzle here that we do need to discuss is the configurability piece. Um, some simple pieces that you're used to, such as right-clicking and changing the background, is here. 
So that part is easy, no big deal. But what if I don't want this bar here? What if I want a dock down here? What do I do? Well, what they've done is they have some extensions that you can access through the web that you um, install an extension that accesses the GNOME shell and you find it on uh, like Firefox, for instance, the extension that you'd like, and then you activate it through the settings menu. So let me show you what that looks like first. I am not liking that, so I'm gonna, whatever. Uh, let's go here. Let's go Firefox. And I've installed the extensions manager. The GNOME Shell extensions website is right here. And here are my installed extensions. And something because I have a Mac background that I love is a quick dock. And so what I can do is turn on the dock and now that dock that has been available when you hit the activities menu, this one right here, or by hitting the super key, now is accessible to you here, which is great. So I can really make some things configurable just by these extensions. Now, is that intuitive way to add? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, I need to spend more time with this. I, I have been inclined to use some other desktop environments, but I can see how workflow, if you get used to some of these, the, using the super key, paging up and down, you can keep your hands pretty much on the keyboard and not necessarily use the mouse too much, but you know, the power of just being able to do that is great. And by the way, since I added that dash to dock here, the window drew itself and still allowed that to be a part of that piece. Now, I'm guessing that if I want to tweak that, I can go here, I can change where it's at, I can put it over here, I can put it over here, you get the deal. It's got intelligible auto hide, which is great. You can define that right here, which is nice. Love it. Behavior, appearance. You can use the built-in theme. If you've used an extension for a theme, you can shrink the dash. You know, I can make this a little more, let's make this fixed and let's make it a little more transparent because that's what I like. Should you, would you, <laughs> it's up to you. Some of these are our practical little pieces like an add disconnect option for Wi-Fi and status menu. Someone wanted that, they were able to build that, add the extension here. It says here, I can add my own extensions and share it with the community. That's really cool. What I'd like to do is just show you real quick. This is Fedora 35. We're really close. Um, the other piece here that might interest you is GNOME, uh, at least with Fedora here, is using Wayland instead of X11 for its window system. They call it there a window manager. GNOME 42 is coming out really soon. And there are some things that are being added that are gonna be great. For instance, uh, light and dark themes naturally out of the box. Uh, some more configurability as far as the way it looks without needing to use extensions to get that look that you're trying to achieve. GNOME is fascinating to me. I think it's super cool. You can see why a lot of distributions use it. It is in comparison to like an XFCE, it uses a lot more resources and it's definitely more we use the term bloated, um, but it's really not. As you could see, I was maneuvering quite easy. Things were responding when I was clicking. Um, I did not feel like I was being hindered by it at all. And the extra tools and little things that may seem like, well, that shouldn't matter, but the calendar integration is great. The integration with an extension through Firefox is great. The virtual machine application boxes is a great addition. I really do hope you enjoyed 
uh, this series that we're doing through desktop environments. Uh, tomorrow is going to be the one that I'm personally using in my favorite, which is KDE. But walking through these, I'm feeling more comfortable and confident in using any of these. I may want to move to Cinnamon. I may want to move to GNOME. But what I do know is, is because Linux has so many options available, I can change it. I can move it without even changing my distribution of Linux. I really do love that. Tomorrow, KDE, thanks for joining me.